I was 11 years old in 1992, living in northern New Jersey, when Saigu, or April 29th as Koreans call it, happened. I had no personal connection to people living in Los Angeles, and it wasn't until college that I met people whose families had lost businesses or had been harmed during the six days that followed April 29th. What I do remember is my aunt expressing concern that something similar could happen in New York City. My parents had opened a green grocer in Brooklyn in 1979, and when my father passed away, the store went to my grandfather and my uncles, and it became a deli. And it remains in my extended family even today. Growing up, I heard stories from my aunt of fighting with shoplifters. I saw how my family members interacted with non-Asian customers. Over the years, I saw the neighborhood around and the clientele of the store dramatically change from any black and brown folks to a mix of longtime residents and more newly arrived white folks. Now, as a historian, I've read a lot of scholarly books and articles written to explain what happened in 1992. I'm familiar with the structures and systems of white supremacy that created a, a situation that could escalate into what we saw. Racism in, in the labor market, federal housing policies that created majority black neighborhoods like South Los Angeles, racist immigration policies. I've also seen media depictions sensationalizing black Korean conflict as if it's the only thing that mattered to the story. As a Christian, I often ask myself, what difference does a shared faith make? What can people of faith do that maybe others cannot? That's something I'll be thinking about as we gather in May. I would argue that meaningful solidarity and partnership first requires confronting hard histories of conflict between communities, both understanding how they fit into larger structural and systemic histories, and also assessing our own hearts to confront lingering suspicions and hesitations. I would argue that it's both and. It's structural and systemic as scholars like to say, but it's also personal. What does it mean to confront hard histories, not just of the police beating of Rodney King, but of the shooting and murder of 15 year old Latasha Harlins by Sinja Du on March 16th, 1991? What does it mean to embrace a theology of both and? To have a conversation where different parties can express their pain and reflect honestly upon their distinct positionality in American histories of white supremacy and racial capitalism. 30 years after 1992, how can history serve as a starting place for honest and mutually dignifying conversations about what happened and where we find ourselves now? I am sober and I am cautious, but I am also hopeful as I look forward to reflecting on what 1992 means for us and our faith communities today. I hope you join us.